good morning and happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. Welcome to Liberty Baptist Church this morning. I'm going to do something just a little bit different. I'm not going to ask the mothers to stand. I'm going to ask the mothers to remain seated for just a minute. And everyone else, let's give our mothers a standing ovation and a hand clap. We are so grateful and thankful for each of you. You have changed our lives in so many ways. I think of my own mother and the blessing that she's been to all of her children, uh, unsurpassed. And, and I know that she was really, really blessed when I was born. But uh, she has been the best mother. My wife has been the best mother to my children. And I know each of you have the same testimony. And mothers, we are so thankful for you today. Let's invite the presence of the Lord here on this wonderful Mother's Day. Father, we love you. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for the privilege to be in your house today, to celebrate you, to worship you. Lord, to celebrate our mothers. We're so thankful that you've allowed us the opportunity to be here in this place today to worship with our mothers. God, I pray that your spirit would come into this place, that you would meet with us, that you would move freely among us, that you would do amazing things today, change our hearts, make us more like Jesus, draw us closer to you. And Father, we pray that whatever you choose to do in this place, that you get every ounce of the glory, all of the praise, and you are worshiped today by us. Once again, we're grateful for this day and what it stands for. We pray all these things in the precious name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Let's all stand and worship. Here we go, let's sing. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah.
Lord some praise this morning. Yes. If you're thankful for who he is and what he's done, let me hear you say amen. God's house, let me hear you say amen. 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 I'm glad to be here worshiping with you. We're, we're starting to get a little sense of uh, normalcy coming back to some of the things that, that we carry on in day-to-day -day life. But as Pastor said in the beginning of all this, we don't just want to go back to the way things used to be. Amen. We should always be moving forward, progressing for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad that you're here worshiping with us today. Uh, members, Thank you for your faithfulness. If you're visiting with us, we've got a few visitors today. My sister and brother-in-law are here, Bryce and Rebecca McDowell. They just announced uh, some big news uh, yesterday, day before yesterday. Uh, they're expecting number three. My mom and dad went from zero grandkids nine years ago to nine grandkids. 
We're setting records in the Hill House, right? Well, we're so glad that y'all are here to worship with us today. If you're watching online, we're glad that you're here. Uh, I say it every week. I'll say it continually every week. Don't just spectate. Don't just watch us worship. Worship with us right where you are. Amen. You may notice the offering plates are back down front. We're going to do a few things differently today. First and foremost, you'll still bring your offerings down to the altar as we used to do after the song service, okay? So the offering plates are here to do that. If you're still uncomfortable with that, we have an offering box on your way out the door, or you can go to libertybaptistwf.org forward slash give, and you can give securely on PayPal there. Watching online, you can do that as well. We're also still uh, in the process of our special offering, okay? Uh, we still have a ways to go. We still have a lot that needs to be done. So be praying about that. If you haven't given... Pray about what God would have you to give. If you have given, maybe pray that God would lay on your heart to give a little more. Uh, but be praying about that so that we can further the work of the kingdom here at Liberty Baptist Church. Amen? All right, so here's what we're going to do. We have a set of memory verses. You had a month off, okay? We got a new set of memory verses for the month of May, and they are super easy. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and four, let's recite together. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Amen. What a great promise in God's word. You have the spirit of God dwelling inside you. You're not just supposed to sit on it. And just wait for the day that Jesus comes back. The God that comforts you, share that God with, us, with the world so that they can be comforted as well. Amen? Let me hear you say amen. Amen. All right, one more thing. We're going to start doing our greeting time again. If you are uncomfortable, shaking hands, bumping elbows, that, that's fine. We're, we're not forcing anybody to do anything. If you want, you just walk around and nod at people. Tell them you're glad to see them. If you want a fist bump, if you want an elbow bump, if you want a chest bump, I don't care. Uh, please, no, no kissing. Uh, we don't do the brotherly kisses anymore like they did in the Bible. But we're going to take time to greet all those around us. So you can do that right now.
Jesus, we're so grateful for your blood. In 2020, it's no different than it was the day you hung on the cross. It's no different than it was before the foundation of the world was laid. It's always been and always will be the blood of Jesus. We live in a world that people try to take blood out of the equation because they say it's offensive. 
They say it's a dirty religion, a bloody religion. I'm so grateful that today, just as it was on March 7th, 1999, it's the blood of Jesus. The day you covered me with your blood, that day, I've never been the same. And I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. If anyone in attendance today, whether in this place, watching online, anyone watching at a later date that has not been covered by the blood of Jesus, I, I pray that they feel you drawing them. Father, that as I say all the time, they would be reminded that Jesus loves them. He always has, he always will. Enough that he was willing to shed his blood, innocent blood, so that they might be saved. We're thankful today for the blood of Jesus. We're thankful for the cross. We're thankful for the death, for the burial. Father, we're grateful for the resurrection. We serve a risen, living Savior. God, we feel you in this place today. We pray that these songs have been songs of worship to you and you've been pleased with our sacrifice of praise to you today. But Father, we also pray that these songs have softened our hearts, opened our minds, caused our focus to be shifted 100% to you. And God, in just a moment when your word is open, that we would hear and we would heed. Father, we pray your spirit fall upon our pastor and you would give him power to preach the word that you've laid on his heart. It's in Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. You may be seated.
Well, amen. Take your Bibles this morning. I want to invite you to 2 Timothy this morning, chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Again, happy Mother's Day to mothers that are here this morning. What special people you are. Brother Hill did a good job of recognizing you guys. And by the way, my wife has a gift for every single mom here this morning. Uh, she'll be out there on the walkway with that. And you got a choice of some different things. And so uh, I wanted to put my greatest sermons in there on a disc for you, but that wasn't a possibility. No, I'm teasing. She's got some really nice, nice stuff for you. And so uh, I, I hope you moms have a wonderful day. You celebrated this day by your family. You should be. Amen, guys? We celebrate our moms. Now, my mom's with the Lord Jesus this morning. Uh, October of 2000, she went to be with the Lord. And uh, last night, my brother and sister and I, we went out, to the, went out to the cemetery there. And my sister's so good at always putting flowers on the grave of my mom and my grandmother and my great-grandmother. And uh, we also uh, got to go to the grave of my grandfather while we were all there together. That doesn't happen very often that all of us are out there. Unfortunately, only in funerals do we typically get all three of us out there. But we had a really good time uh, and just reminiscing about mom and, and my brother who was, he's kind of the black sheep of the family. He made himself that, but telling all of his stories from his perspective. Of course, my sister and I recollect things a lot different than he does, but uh, we had a good time. And you know, one of the sweet moments was that when we got to stand uh, there at the grave and I got to pray with my brother and sister just thanking God for the life and the legacy of my mother and the, the fact, the great truth that we'll get to see her again one of these days. And until then, her legacy lives on and, and three uh, uh, men and women that, that, that love her, love the Lord Jesus Christ. That's, I think, the most important thing. Uh, it's been 20 years this year, uh, this coming October, that, uh, that my mother went to be with the Lord. And uh, mothers are very special, Amen. I, I, I think about love, and, and sometimes us men, we just don't get it, but I think the closest thing that you can find to the love of the Lord Jesus Christ is the love of a mother. Only a mother will go to the great lengths and the great sacrifice of, like the Lord Jesus did for her kids. And this morning, I want you to understand, moms, you're special. I'm not, a, I'm not an expert on motherhood, but I find something as I... As I have ministered to moms all these years, and my own mom, what I've seen from her and my grandmother and my great-grandmother and from my sister, who is a tremendous mom, uh, the Bible's filled also with great women. And there's so many different ways I could have gone this morning, but I want you to understand this morning that a mother gives to her children a, a big part of her, who she is, what she is, what she's like. And can I tell you this morning, the greatest thing that a mom could do to her, for her child is not to give them fame, uh, not to give them fortune, but to give them faith. And the greatest faith is her own faith, amen? Faith in the Lord Jesus, as we're going to see in just a few moments. And I want you to look with me in 2 Timothy chapter 1 this morning. One of my favorite passages uh, regarding moms in the scripture because it doesn't just speak of a mom, but it speaks of a grandmom as well. 2 Timothy chapter 1, and let's begin reading in verse number 1. says, Paul, an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, it was his son in the ministry. He was Timothy's mentor, adopted son if you would. He said, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears. Timothy was a pastor. Paul knew something about what he was enduring and going through that I may be filled with joy. Now note in verse number 5, Paul names two godly women that were greatly used to raise up this young champion for Christ. See, it wasn't the Apostle Paul that began the work. It was the Lord Jesus that began the work in Timothy through mom and through grandma. 
And he says in verse 5, And when I call to remembrance the unfringed faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that it's in thee also. Oh, how we need some moms today in America like Lois and Eunice. Amen? I think as I look around the culture today and the movements of of, of women so many times think they're being empowered and yet they're being robbed of the glory of what God made them to be as a woman and certainly as a mother. Women above all else pour their faith into their children. That's such an important thing, moms. I mean, I think any good mother and father want to do the very best they can for their children. We want to give them good things. Jesus talked about that. You know, sometimes uh, we might have been raised in a situation that that wasn't ideal. I thank God for my mom and dad. I thank God for the home life that we had my entire life. I saw a mom and dad that loved me and loved my sister and loved my brother and loved each other. And I saw a, a mom and dad that more importantly loved the Lord Jesus Christ. There was never anger. There was never fists being thrown in our house unless it was between me and my little brother, you know. I mean, little brothers do that. Big brothers do that. But mom and dad never lifted a finger in anger, never yelled and screamed constantly. I mean, it was was a little bit of heaven right here on earth. Now, you don't realize that when you're a child. But as you look back as as an older man, and I got called an older man this week, as you look back, you remember, man, it was awesome. Yeah, there were some tough times. There were some bad times. But overall, it was a joy-filled, godly experience. Now, you think about faith, and that's what I'm talking about, giving to our children. Faith really is what we believe about God, what we believe about His Son, Jesus Christ, and what we believe in His Word. Amen? It's what we believe about those things and how we live those things out in our life, not on Sundays, but every single day. How we take, really what it is, it's our faith and our practice. What it is, is is what we believe and how we behave. See, if what we say we believe doesn't change the way we behave, then we need to go check and see what we really believe. When we do what God's Word says each and every day, what are we doing? We're exercising faith. And remember what Hebrews eleven six 6 said, I gave it to you last week. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. We'll never bring glory to God. We'll never be pleasing to Him apart from our faith. Amen? So the best thing that can be said of any mother, the best thing that can be said of any grandmother or father or any parent for that matter is that they loved God, His Son Jesus, His Word, and they passed that on to their children. Amen. That is what we learn from Lois and Eunice this morning. I want you to look, first of all, as we consider about this faith of Lois and Eunice and what made it such a great gift to Timothy was, first of all, it was a saving faith. Isn't that really where it all starts right there? Notice what Paul wrote in verse number 5. When I call to remembrance, when I call to remembrance the unfinished faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, started with grandma, and then it was passed down to thy mother Eunice. And now we see it passed down a third generation, and I am persuaded that it's in thee also, Paul writes. Now, if you were to go over and examine a little further uh, the background of these two godly women that we find in the Scripture this morning, you would need to go to Acts chapter 16. And if you were to go over there, you would find that Paul on his second missionary journey would be established in churches. And how did they establish churches? But by bringing people to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't establish a church by coming in with a personality and a program and go out with uh, some great uh, uh, ideas as far as feeding people and giving people this and giving people that and steal members from other churches. That's not how Jesus established a church ever. You go out by winning people to the Lord Jesus Christ and they get saved and then they go win their family and their friends to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we, we got an email, Brother Hill got it on our website this week from a, a, a lady that was here 29 years ago. And uh, she was a, a young airwoman at that time at that military base. 
And she came in, and, and uh, my dad back then in 1986 asked her, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? No doubt at that point, dad worked the altar down here. She came forward, and he questioned her. She says, I do. I've been saved. He said, have you been scripturally baptized? She said, no. He said, well, you need to. And what she did in that, in that email to our church, and this is not just for me and, and for Pastor Hill and, and for uh, Jack Ross, but this is for the people of Liberty Baptist Church. She went on to recount from that moment on how that God used Liberty to establish a foundation in her life, how that God used Liberty from that moment that she was saved and baptized and began to be discipled and, and to begin to serve. And I love the fact that she closed her letter with saved to serve. I, don't, I guess she's been listening to some sermons. Maybe somebody else has said that before, but you know, I've been saying that for years. We're not saved to sit. Soak and sour, we're saved to serve. Amen. But she went on and talked about how uh, God allowed her to, to find a godly man. And they got married, and, and the church they got married in, they've been serving for all these many years, and they've raised these children, and they're married to um, uh, men or women that are godly men and women. And many of them are in ministry, or one of them's preparing to be a pastor right now. And she goes back, and the really cool thing is, she gives God the glory through Liberty Baptist Church. Well, guess what? All of that began somewhere. All of that started somewhere. And that's what happened here with Lois and Eunice. Paul's out there winning people to Jesus, starting churches. And by the way, you notice it's not church. It's church is, plural. There is no invisible universal church. When you hear people say that, well, we can stay home and just worship Jesus because after all, we're the body of Christ. We're the temple. And that's true. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. But we are not a church in and of and to ourselves. We belong to a church or we're out of God's will. We faithfully attend a church or we're out of God's will. Amen? Now that's Bible right there, folks. Amen? So listen to what God intended. God intended for people to be saved, and that's how he grew his church. And in Acts 16, verses 1 through 5, on Paul's second missionary journey, he said, Then came he to Deborah of Lystra, and Lystra, and a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish, and believed. She believed. But his father was a Greek, which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters. Now what you're going to realize here is uh, Timothy's half Jew, half Greek, okay? And so there would have been some, uh, some different, uh, uh, different traditions practiced in that home. But what Paul did here is, is uh, brought him in line with the Jews and he would be greatly used uh, in, in that way. He says, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. And verse number four, and as they went through the cities, they delivered him the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and the elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were, now notice elders is plural there, and so were the churches, plural. You have a pastor in a church. You do have under shepherds working with the pastor to support the pastor, but you have a pastor. One pastor, and he's under the lordship of Jesus Christ, and it all goes down from right there. It trickles down the leadership. It's not this plurality of elders that is being preached in churches today. And so we see that elders, plural, and churches, plural, established in the faith and increased in number daily. I love that. They had church every day. And what a glorious thing that would be, amen? Amen. Now, Timothy's mother, Eunice, is described in the passage. She's the Jewish woman who believed. And both, both Lois, Timothy's grandmother, and Eunice, Timothy's mother, were one to Christ during Paul's uh, first missionary journey. And they believed, the Bible says. They had put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that we're saved by what? By faith. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. We're, we're saved by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone. Amen. It's not by works. If we could do something to get to heaven, we could sashay into heaven one day and put our arms out and say, look at me, look what I did. But Paul said later there'd be no glorying saving the Lord Jesus Christ when we get to heaven, amen? 
And so the Lord Jesus had forgiven them of their sins. He had brought peace and purpose in their life, and they wanted everybody to know what Christ had done for them. And we see this played out as you follow the story of their family. And most of all, their immediate family. And it goes out from there. They wanted them to experience what they had experienced through the Lord Jesus Christ. So they were saved, and Timothy got saved as a result of what? Them being saved. Let me take you back to 1978. Now think how many years ago that was. June of 1978, my family visited Liberty Baptist Church for the very first time. We were in the old building on the corner of Thomas and Abbott. Now sits there some little quadruplex houses. In fact, my sister and brother-in-law lived there at one time. Sits right there. It's right off of Ray Road. Well, that's where the church was. It belonged, the building, to Faith Baptist. They had built a new building, and we were due to close on that building on April the 11th, and of course you know what happened on April the 10th. The tornado blew it completely away. The whole thing imploded, was destroyed. The roof fell down on the pews, and we salvaged what we could out of there. But what was amazing, when you go back to June of 1978, was the very first Sunday, we, we were there, Brother Reed preached a message, And my mom, she didn't wait for dad. She didn't wait for any of the kids. My mom walked down and she accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior that day. We had been church members before. We had been living a life of church people for a long time. And and, and, and I don't remember uh, exactly what it was or or what the message was or what the song was or what the invitation was, but I know that day my mom could not sit. And if you knew my mom, she was not the kind of person to go march around in front of people trying to draw attention to herself. She was not that person. But she knew she could no longer sit or no longer stand behind the pew. She had to get out. And she was saved. And I remember that like it was yesterday, my mom getting saved. And, and, and that's why I stand before you this morning. I go back. Liberty is special to me and my family. My mom and each of her children were saved at Liberty Baptist Church. So Liberty is special to us. And, and, and it all started with a mother getting saved and giving her life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Along the way, many of our family has been saved as a result of the ministries through this church all starting with my mom being saved. My dad was not one of those guys that just jump out and do, do something like that. But when mom went down, guess what? Dad followed afterwards. He had already been saved. I followed down. I didn't know what they were even doing. I just went down because mom and dad's going, I'm going too. Five generations of my family have been members of this great church. My great-grandmother, my grandmother, my mother, my brother and sister and me, my sons, my sister's sons and daughters, and now she's old. She's got grandkids, a bunch of them. How many do you have? Like grandkids? You've you've got three, okay. How many does Robbie have? Like six. He's, he's working like the Hill Group. He's, he's working on getting that nine in there pretty quick. You know, build a basketball team. But uh, anyway, I don't have any grandkids, praise God. I've got kids in graduate school, so uh, I can't afford grandkids right now. But anyway, five generations, it all started with a mom willing to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, that was a saving faith. And I say that because it didn't stop with her. What she got that day passed down to us kids, and we all followed Christ in salvation as a result of that. Amen? But secondly, it was a seen faith. Go back to verse number 5 of our text. When I call to remembrance the unfriends faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that it's in thee also. What did grandma and, and mom have? They had a genuine faith. And that word translated, notice there, unfinged faith. It means without hypocrisy. It means without hypocrisy. It means genuine. It means the real deal. See, it's easy to come in here and play church on Sundays. But what goes on on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday? And better yet, it's not what goes on out there, but what goes on in your home, moms? We can put on the church lady stuff come Sunday and come Wednesday night and be a totally different person throughout the week to our families. 
It was a genuine faith. They were not pretenders. They were not playing church. The Lord Jesus Christ had touched Lois and Eunice and Timothy could easily see it. I love, I quoted Adrian last week. Adrian Rogers used to say, more things are caught than taught. You know, it's easy to come up with a lot of things. Don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. Only to see mom and dad do the exact thing that they're saying don't do. It's like, don't be stupid. Well, then why are you being stupid, mom? (laughs) You know? Don't do that. Well, then why are you doing it? We don't know a lot about Timothy's father except that he was a Greek. But here is what we do know about Timothy's mother and grandmother. They both had a genuine faith. They believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and they wanted more than anything for Timothy, their son, to know the Lord Jesus Christ. It was a saving faith. It was a seen faith. And that's a good question, moms. Number one, do you have a saving faith? Man, what a joy last week that that Jewy heading back to South Korea, accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, do you realize she was literally snatched from the pits of hell just days before she headed off to a a different culture, a different world that she might not, although there's a lot of wonderful Baptist churches in South Korea, she might have never been exposed to the gospel again. Talk about being snatched from the fire. I praise God for that. To Him be the glory. Amen. And I pray to God that she can find a good discipling church and get involved over there. I know she faces an uphill battle perhaps with her family, but the best thing she can do is go to her family as maybe perhaps the first one and say, listen to what happened to me. Listen to what God did for me through Jesus Christ. Here's the, here's the truth, Mom. You can't pass on to your children something you do not have. It was one of the things that I prayed with my brother and sister about was, you know, mom didn't just teach us about Jesus by, by the, her saving faith and we uh, seen that in the home. But my mom was one of those ladies really, and, and yeah, I'm bragging on my mom. Amen? Hey, amen? But I tell you, she's like a super mom. She was. She's like a super mom. We were, we were involved in everything you can possibly be involved in at the church, and she still kept an immaculate house, cooked awesome meals with weenies that nobody else could come up with. Weenie surprise, we used to call it. No, she did a wonderful job. And us kids, man, our rooms were clean. Uh, I haven't figured that one out. How she did that, I don't know. But I remember when I went off into the Army, I made my bed up, and the drill sergeant came by and goes, that's what I'm talking about right there. How'd I learn that? I had a mom make those nurses, make those nurses' corners. Remember that? How you fold that under and tuck that in, and man, you could bounce a quarter off of it. I mean, we got our bed. We didn't play on our bed. Mom made your bed, clean your room. Now get out of the house. I don't want to see you till supper, you know? Go tear something up or burn something down, or the only time to come back in is if we have to go get stitches. That's pretty much the way it was back when we were kids, right? We didn't have toys and Nintendos and Game O's and Xboxes and PS4s. We had sticks. And somebody's going to get hit with a stick or a rock throughout the day, you know? That and some old bikes that we were always spray painting and taking apart. That saving faith. It was a seen faith. Mom, do you have that? Where your kids can say, you know what, mom's the real deal. Mom is what she says she is. Now, I'm not, listen, there, none of us have arrived yet. You understand what I'm saying? That's me, that's my wife, that's, that's my children, even my dad. I have a great love and respect for him. He'll be 75 here next month. You know what? But even dad hasn't arrived yet. He's still, well, he's still learning. He's still growing. He's still exercising his faith. But I tell you what, I, it's seen. It's seen. I guarantee you that, that Sunday uh, after he had had his heart attack, he didn't come to church, and Kim showed up, and I said, where's dad? And she said, uh, well, he's not feeling good this morning, and the dad doesn't come to church. I said, you tell him to go straight to the hospital, that bullheaded old man, tell him to go to the hospital when you get home. And sure enough, he had had a heart attack like a week before. He's out hunting, trying to hunt, climb a hill after a heart attack. But I knew he wasn't here. Something's terribly wrong. And shouldn't that be the case with us? 
You see them and it doesn't look like they're being faithful or they're stepping out a little bit. Or something's wrong. Someone said, you can con a con and you can fool a fool, but you cannot kid a kid. Amen? They know. Moms, if you plan to pass along to your children the greatest gift, the gift of faith, then you've got to live it in your home. You've got to live it in your home. When you're loving Jesus and when you're living for Jesus, when they see a life that's different from the world, they're going to know there's something different about you. Amen? When they see a life that Jesus makes in you, they're going to say, you know what, I want that life too. It's not always easy. We don't always make, do the right thing. We, we have, we, we're just human. You know, my brother, of all people, helped me with that because as a pastor, there, uh, again, there's so much pressure, such immense pressure on the pastor. And when this thing come around and stuff, and just different things, because like I said last week, you know, sometimes you just want to say, let me set these clerical robes, quote, aside, and ha- let's have some some fun with some folks. When I say that, I mean not being very nice. That's the flesh. And, and, and I can't do that. I don't have the luxury of doing that as a pastor. I don't want to do that. I want to bring honor and glory to the Lord Jesus in all that I do. Sometimes it's hard to bite the tongue. Sometimes it's hard not to act like other people act and do what other people do. My brother said, he goes, you know, yeah, you're a pastor. And, 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 and he made me feel really good. I won't tell you all that he said, but he said, you're just a human being too. That helped me with a lot of pressure that I put on myself. Because I'm not, I'm not perfect. I make a lot of mistakes. I have. And I'll, guess what? I will. I will. That's why when you, when you come to this church, keep your eyes on Jesus. I could have a bad day, a bad week. I can make a big mistake. I can make the wrong decision. And if, you're, if you have your eyes on me, you're going to be you're going to be uh, putting the ditch on that thing, so to speak. But when you're following Jesus, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be right, you'll be okay. Amen? Talk about influencing your children for God. Actions speak louder than words. Amen? I thank God that God gave me a, a, a mom, and I thank God that he gave me a wife, both with a genuine faith. It's saving faith, it's seen faith. Amen? My wife, boy, you... You, you don't know me as well as sh- you, you think you do. She has to put up with a monster sometimes, you know, a big baby sometimes, you know. I'm, a, I, I'm opinionated. I've got opinions. I've got real strong convictions and strong passions. And it's hard to bridle that all the time. And she just sometimes has to say no. <laughs> I, was, I was texting somebody uh, about a, di- a situation and she said and I was verbalizing what I needed to say and what I wanted to say and she said you didn't say that did you and I said no I didn't say that <laughs> and I told her what I said and it was of course you know something really nice and something really sweet but you know what they needed was to be you know wake up what are you doing you know amen Kind of like the guy that went to the, went to the doctor. He says, Doc, I, I got this problem. He says, what is it? He said, well, well every, every, every time I touch it right here, it hurts. He said, well, don't touch it. <laughs> you know, it's simple. If it hurts, don't do it, right? Great. Notice the last thing with me this morning. There was saving faith and seen faith. It was shared faith. Amen. Uh, let me show you, and, and, and we'll move on to chapter 3 here. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3 real quick. We won't spend a lot of time here. But here Paul has given Timothy some very important instructions on how to stay faithful in the tough times and what would soon be coming. And here's what he says in verse 14, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 14. But continue, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. He had, he had learned some things. He had been assured of some things. It started with his, his mom and his grandmother. And, and, and notice what it says there in verse 15. And that from a child. There it is. 
that from a child thou hast known what? The holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. His mother, his grandmother shared their faith with their son by sharing with him what? The word of God. Amen? The lady I work with, uh, we, we were talking. She, she listened to uh, some of our services. And one th- she said, man, you're really passionate. I can't imagine being any other way, right? If you believe it, you ought to be passionate about it. Amen? You ought to hold up the standard for truth. You ought to proclaim the truth. And one of the things that I told her, I said, you know, I've, got a, I've had a lot of detractors down through the years, people probably that hate me, but I'll promise you this. And some of them have even verbalized it to you, to me. I don't agree with you on this or that or that, but one thing that no one can ever say is that you haven't preached the Word of God. Amen? Amen. That's where it's at. The Word of God is where the power is. It's not in my wisdom. It's not in anecdotes or, or some things that I've learned. It's in the Word of God, the Word of truth. Amen? And so I want you to understand that this morning. And he says, And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which is able to make you wise unto salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. They had shared the word. What does the Bible say about faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. By the word of God. And I tell you what, mom, that's an important thing. And you might not be a big reader. That might not be a passion of yours. I read constantly. Uh, all different types of things. This week, I, start, I, I, I started reading a book about uh, corruption with all these vaccines and pandemic and all, all this stuff that's going on out there. I started reading the uh, Dr. PhD's book on that. Well, before that, the night before, I was reading about wounded knee. And uh, I, I read, and I just read. That's why my brain, my wife says, is full of a lot of useless information because I'll read anything about anything. One time, <laughs> brother, Pastor Steve, I was just curious how you make whiskey. I'm not going to drink it, but I was just curious. How do, how do they actually make that? I learned how to make a steel. We've got one in the back of the church right back here. I'll show it to you later. No, I'm teasing about that, but I don't know. You know, my wife is like, what are you watching? What are you doing? I'm just reading up on something I didn't know, you know, and, and, and I, thirst for, I thirst for knowledge. But there's a big difference between knowledge and wisdom. You can get knowledge and wise. Brother Reed used to say this. There's people educated beyond their own intelligence, right? There's a lot of people like that. Their PhD stands for piled higher and deeper, right? They have knowledge. They have no wisdom. No wisdom. But from the Word of God, what do we get? We get wisdom. Wisdom. That's what he says. It's able to, able to make thee wise. You want to be wise? You can give knowledge to your kids. I've got all kinds of knowledge I can give people about a lot of different subjects. Kind of a Jack of all trades, master of none in a lot of areas. But what I want to give to my children, wisdom. Amen? When people come to their pastor, what do they need? They need wisdom. Where does that come from? The Word of God. I'm not going to spend time to go there, but this is something for you to read later this week. Go over to Deuteronomy 6 and read verses 1 through 25, and it talks about the, the uh, really, it's a mandate for mom and dad to teach the Bible, not just to read the Bible, not just to have a devotion a day to keep the devil away, but to teach the Bible to their children. Along with the Bible, there's a lot of other things that you can add to that. Obviously, church, Christian camps and things like that, Sunday school, we're, I'm, I'm excited to get all that going again the first week in June. We'll start Sunday school back up. We'll start Wednesday nights back up for Bible study of all different age groups. But I see so many parents that minimize the importance of the things in their kids' lives where they can get the Word of God. You know, it's a question. Here comes sports camps and here comes uh, church camp. Hey, my boys played sports. My boys were in the band all six years from junior high all the way through high school. They played sports. But guess what? They didn't miss church for sports. 
and they didn't miss church camp to go to some sports camp. There's a thousand sports camps out there. I'll find one that's not going to be in conflict with church camp. Why? Because I've seen in my own life, and I've seen as a youth pastor, and I've seen as a pastor, what can happen in some of the greatest decisions of a person's life, of a child's life, is made at camp. Mom and dads, that ought to be a no-brainer for you. Uh, Sports camp or church camp? Let me tell you something. Your little Johnny or your little Susie, there is a 99% chance that they're never going to play college ball. You understand that, right? 99% chance. And of those that play college ball, of those that play college ball, there's a 99% chance that your little Johnny or Susie will not play professionally. That's a fact. Those are statistics that are reality. And yet, every little thing that comes along of a sports nature, and I, hey, I'm a sports fanatic. My boys are like walking sports almanacs. They passed me up a long time ago. They live and breathe sports. There's nothing wrong with that. But guess what? We don't put that above the God stuff. If you, see, here's, there's a lot of things we can learn here. There's good stuff. Family's good. Sports are good. Jobs are good. But when you let that stuff get before the best stuff, it becomes bad stuff, right? When you let good stuff get in the way of the best stuff, that's very foolish. Amen? You with me this morning? Amen. You still love me? Because I'm telling you, the thing that will last for all life. I was at AutoZone the other day and ran into a guy, I won't give you his name because he lives in Wichita Falls, but he was, a, he was like a stud in high school. I remember him. And I wasn't. He was. Guess what? He outweighs me by about 150 pounds now. You know, he's bald and ugly just like me. And guess what? He's just driving an old beat-up pickup. In other words, all that energy, all those things that he invested in, understand, it all played out at one point. Guess what I got while he was getting all that stuff? What I got is the Lord Jesus Christ. And guess what I'm still doing at 55 years old this year? I'm still serving Jesus. I'm still living the abundant life that Christ promised in John 10.10. And, and guess what? I've got heaven waiting for me with a, with a Lord willing and to God's glory a, a pile of crowns that I can lay at His feet one day. And above it all, that hopefully, by God's grace and to His glory, I can hear Him say, well done, thou good and faithful. Didn't start out so great, honestly. But you can finish great. You can finish well. There's not a day that goes by that I don't think about my mom. Mothers like Lois and Eunice make an impact, right? Glenda Sue, that was my mom's name. She went by Sue. Susie Q, that was a big song. Run Around Sue, Susie Q, those were popular songs in the 50s and 60s, right? Then she named her daughter Rhonda. Then the Beach Boys come along with Help Me Rhonda, right? You know, I remember those songs. I love that old music. There's something special about moms, though. And again, I told you at the outset of the message, it'll be 20 years this October that she went to heaven. And I'm not a poet or a lyricist by any stretch of the imagination. I barely can put a message together. But I remembered a couple of years back, I just began to think about mom. And, and I, I, one of my earliest childhood memories is, and, and I can't remember everything. I can remember things from when I was uh, easily two and three years old. I can still remember them. And one of the things that I remember, and I, and I don't know the song, but mom used to rock me in a rocking chair. And, uh, and she would hum and sing a certain song. And I, and, and I remember it later in life, although I wasn't paying much attention, as she would share that same song with her grandbabies. And, uh, and it was that, and of course, mom's home was always, there's something, if, if you walked in mom's home, it, it had a certain smell, normally spice and things like that. She was really big on really clean, uh, country home type uh, feel to it. And it was comfortable. It was, I mean, I'm not a big put things on every 
piece of the wall kind of person, but my mom had something on just about every wall in the house, multiple things. And, and so when you walked in, you just, I, I mean, there was just a feeling of home. And it really puts you at ease. And, and it brings to mind those, those early days when I was just a baby, really, and her rocking me. And, and so a couple of years ago, I, I just began to write some thoughts down on paper. And I want to close this morning by sharing with you just a, just a little poem that I started writing. I don't know if I'm finished with it or not, but she, she passed in October. And for a number of years after that, although acknowledging that time that she passed, I would, I would start kind of just, things would change. I would, I'd, I'd be going, but come late September, October, November, I'd just kind of get down a little bit. I often wondered what that was about. I, I really never put two and two together for many years, quite frankly. And, and I'd, I'd, I'd drive by the cemetery a lot and find myself out there and uh, just spend time, you know, praying, spend time thanking God for the mom and dad that I had and, and, and spend time, you know, just reflecting on my childhood and and so God kind of led me to write this, I think. You know, it's just not overtly Christian in its theme, but it just tells you a little bit about my mom, and I just want to share it with you in closing this morning. I, I entitled it October Winds, because when those October winds begin to blow and the breeze turns cool and the leaves begin to change, my mind always goes back to that time of year when mom went home to be with the Lord. And, and here's, here's how it goes. It says, October Winds. Like memories, these winds, they come and go, bringing to my heart a familiar ebb and flow. Like the seasons long since gone, these winds take me back to the melodies of home. Like songs from the rocking chair, these winds remind me of mama and her loving care. These keepsakes of childhood, memories, seasons, and songs. They flood my soul this time each year with thoughts of going home. Yes, these October winds are a welcome breeze to a homesick boy missing mama and her melodies. October winds, like a voice I long to hear, these winds bring a familiar sound ringing in my ears. Like a scent of heavenly spice, these winds bring me back a childhood fragrance so right. Like a vibe you feel when it's deja vu, these winds tell a story. It's the story of me and you. These keepsakes of childhood, voices, scents, and vibes, they flood my mind this time each year with thoughts of you by my side. Oh, these October winds are a welcome breeze to a homesick boy missing mama and her melodies. And that's what I've gotten so far. I haven't worked on it in a couple of years, but I wanted to share that with you just so moms, you know today how special you are and the impact that you can make. It might not be realized right now uh, by your children. We can be ungrateful, especially in our youth. But there, there comes a time that, you know, the Bible says, train up a child and when he is old, he'll not depart from it. I was telling my brother last night, he was talking about how as he's just more and more today than ever, how important God is to him and how important family is to him. And I said, you know, as you get older, as you begin to reflect on the end of your life and, and what your life has meant and, and what eternity holds, it's a natural thing to start really evaluating what is really important. And moms, can I tell you, there's nothing, there's nothing more important for you as a mother to do for or give to your children than a genuine faith, a saving faith, one that's seen in your life. Hey, my boys live in a preacher home, and the lady that works with me, she said, I've known a lot of preachers in this town. And she said, their kids are horrible. Their kids are high and their kids are out carousing around. You know what? And I told you before, I'll never say never with my kids because they're preacher kids. They might. I don't know. But if they ever do, number one, I'll kill them. 
And number two, it will be not because of what I did for them, but in spite of what I did for them and their mother did for them. Amen? So moms, the greatest thing you can give to your kids is a life of faith in Jesus Christ. You go, well, you know what? I've, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've been down the road a long time and I've, I've not made that the priority perhaps that it needs to be in my life, especially at home. As long as you're breathing oxygen on planet Earth, there's always time to change things and do it right. The only thing that keeps people from doing that is what? Pride. I've had to apologize to my sons. There's a lot of things, I, especially with Colin, I was way hard on him. I've had to apologize. I made a lot of mistakes as a first-time parent. I've made mistakes as a second-time parent, probably being too easy. I should have beat the second one more. But you know what? At the end of the day, the most important thing that they got from my wife and from me is the Lord Jesus. What about you? I love you so much, and moms, just know how special you are to me. And as your pastor and as your friend, I see you as a special person and a, and a very important person in our church. And, and I encourage you just to stay strong, be faithful, admit the mistakes, Move forward in a positive way with God's Word, following Him and following His Word, and you'll be okay, I promise you. Let's stand with our heads bowed and eyes closed. Our Father in Heaven, Lord, as we come before You this morning, we are grateful for a day that's set aside to celebrate moms. And I know for many here this morning, their mother has already gone on to eternity. I know it's possible that even here in, under the sound of my voice this morning, there might be somebody that's estranged from their mother. Something got in the way, a, a difficult time led to breakage, and, and yet, Father, here we are. And life is too short and eternity is too long to let little earthly things get in the way of one of the most special relationships ever created on planet earth by you, Holy Father. The relationship of a mom and her child. She literally goes to the the brink of death's doorstep to bring them into this world. Lord, let it be said that each mom here at Liberty, they endeavored not only to bring them into this world, but to see that they could bring them with them one day into heaven. That they would know the Lord Jesus Christ because of her testimony of having known the Lord Jesus and having lived a life for Him faithfully in front of them. God, help us to do it, not so that we can have some certain outcome of success or, or possessions or things like that that the world gets their eyes on and some even misguided preachers get their eyes on. But Father, help us to realize that eternal things are the most important things. And only what's done for Jesus will last this lifetime, last past this lifetime. So moms, God strengthen them this morning. And dads as well. This is not the dad's day. We have that coming up in June. But Lord, moms and dads together. I can't imagine raising kids by myself or my wife raising these boys by herself. We've been greatly privileged and yet... My heart goes out to so many moms and even dads that are raising children all alone. And I thank God that we've got and we've had in our church both moms and dads, single parents that have done such a splendid and outstanding job of raising their children to follow you, Jesus. To be faithful and just give it all they've got to just to see that they stay the course and they've modeled for their children the life of Christ to the best of their ability. God, this morning I pray if there's somebody here that, 
that's never had that saving faith, that they would come to you, whether they're here in the audience this morning or listening online or listening at a later date, that they would come to that saving faith this morning and then they would live it out so that it can be seen and then that they would share it. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for the great gift of Calvary. That agape love demonstrated in laying your life down for your children. As I said in the message, the greatest example of love ever. And yet, that's the closest thing that I can find that represents the love of a mother is the love of Christ. Bless our moms today, dear Father, in this time of invitation. And to you be the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. With heads bowed and eyes closed, Brother Hill sings this morning. Some have come and to pray. You want to come, just spend a time thanking God for mom or maybe praying with mom. You come on. Don't linger. You let God have his way in your life. You need to sit down in the chair, do that. You do whatever you need to do. But let God speak to you. Just soften my heart. Break me apart. I need you. Pierce through the dark. Cleanse every part of me. All I am. I serve. Soften my heart and break me apart. I need you to open my eyes to see that you're shaping my life. All I am, I serve. spirit strong in me my flesh may fail but God you never will I may be weak your spirit strong in me my flesh may fail my God you never will give me faith to trust what you say that you're good and your love is great. I'm broken inside. I give you my life. As these continue to pray with heads bowed and eyes closed, you can be seated quietly.
And all God's people said, well, amen. Thank you this morning for your kind attention and allowing me to honor my mom. And moms, I hope that you felt honored as well uh, as I gave you what God laid on my heart today. A uh, couple of things. As, as I said, just remember, uh, no Sunday night, Wednesday night, and through the month of May. Uh, once we get to June, we'll kick all that back off again, and we'll start our refreshes and all that thing throughout the summer. Uh, one of the things I want to do uh, once they reduce some more of these restrictions is to have our annual family fun night at the Plex where everybody can come out and have pizza and salad and kids can run wild and do all that stuff. And so we'll get more information uh, to you as soon as that is possible. And so uh, that'll, that'll be out there in the near future. Uh, we're still waiting to further make plans about camps and things like that. Just have to see, honestly, how, how all this is going. I mean, in Texas, it's one way. In other places, it's other things. And so uh, just continue to pray for the leaders, not just in Washington, but around the, the United States. And I thank, God for, I thank God for the leaders we have in Texas. While I don't agree with them on, on everything, uh, senators like Ted Cruz, godly Christian man, supporting that, that shop owner, got sentenced to seven, month, or seven weeks, seven days, excuse me, in jail. And uh, the governor stepped up and said, no, you're not going to do that. You, you're not going to put anybody in jail for not following executive orders. That includes mine. That's, that, that, I mean, you, that's a, a humble man that does that right there. And then uh, Senator Ted Cruz went and got his hair cut when she opened her salon back up. And so that was pretty cool right there. He needed one. He said, I haven't had my hair cut in three months. But uh, anyway, I appreciate our leaders. But let's pray for them throughout this thing where they will, they'll have wisdom and not follow the, all the crazy uh, fear mongers that are out there trying to scare people to death. And when it's all said and done, uh, I promise you, uh, this, this thing's going to look a lot different in retrospect looking back. And, and I think we're all going to go, man, I can't believe, can't believe we did some of the things we did. So anyway, it's in God's hands, but be safe and continue to wash your hands, use hand sanitizer like we've always encouraged here. If you're sick, stay home. If you're fearful about getting out or doing it, stay home, okay? We're not making anybody do anything. So you do what you feel the Lord would have you do, and you'll answer to God for that, and we're going to answer to God for what we do. But we're going to have church, amen? And come June, we're going to have church on, on uh, Wednesday nights again and Sunday school and all that. And so uh, we've got those things coming up, so remember that. Also remember to be sweet to your moms uh, today, amen? Give them a call. Let them know you love them if they're not here in town. And uh, by way of prayer matter, pray for uh, Brother Marsden and Miss Marsden. They headed out to New York. Why in the world they're heading up there? They say there's a blizzard coming up there right now. I don't know. But they got to Oklahoma and broke down. Time and chain, they're not for sure of the extent of the damage on their Honda yet. So they won't know till Monday. So they're trapped in a, a hotel room uh, until then. And so they're Miss Mary spending Mother's Day in a, in a hotel in some little town in Oklahoma. So y'all pray for them that God will be real and they'll be able to enjoy some time together. But anyway, I don't know what the plan is. I might end up needing to get a trailer and go pick their car up if the motor's trash uh, or what. We don't know yet. But uh, anyway, I might be needing to get in touch with some of you men to help me get that done first part of the week. And so uh, anyway, just pray for them. Uh, I, th I know that they're coming. They're pretty sure they're coming back uh, to Texas uh, back home here no matter what happens, and then they'll do their trip at a later date. So I'm pretty sure that's, uh, that's the plan, what Brother Randy said, but I, I don't know. That could have changed. So pray for them. Uh, Brother Hill, anything else I need to mention? Remember the special offering? That's ongoing. Uh, we had that set uh, for a particular date, but with everybody being knocked out of, out of place and, you know, and, and so many of our people uh, having to stay home, uh, just remember that, that that is still going on out there, and uh, we're about 13,000 right now, and uh, so we've still got a little ways to go uh, to get, get to that and, uh, and get where we can do what we need to do with that. And so uh, I'll, I'll have more information uh, forthcoming as we continue to go through the weeks and see how close we're getting there as to what we're actually going to be able to do uh, with uh, the things we had set out to do in initiating that. So, all right. A special offering, talked about that. Be sure and label it. It goes to a, a separate account. It doesn't go in the operations budget. It goes in a separate account by itself. So be sure and label that Easter offering, special offering. 
so that we know that. And uh, our bookkeeper, Kimber, takes care of that. And so uh, we're putting all that over there. That way, when it's time to uh, spend, we'll spend out of that account, and it won't intermingle. So uh, got that taken care of. Anything else? Yes, sir. I like those glasses you got. Those are new. Well, thank you. They sell men's glasses where you got those? <laughs> no, I'm teasing. Let's stand, and uh, we'll be dismissed in prayer. Me and Brother Hill, we love to give each other a hard time. I give him more of a hard time than he gives me. He's a, such a wonderful man and a dear friend and does such a, a lot around here, around the church. I appreciate him. I like to pick on him. So, well, let's be dismissed in prayer. And uh, who did I call on to pray last week? Brother, Brother Duke last week? Okay. Well, Dad don't remember. Was it me? I'm going to ask Brother Nelson if he'll word our dismissal prayer. God bless you.